Hello everyone, welcome to this material characterization course. So far we have uh, seen a diffraction principle in TEM and then various techniques involved in a diffraction and how to extract information from the uh, simply looking at the diffraction pattern of a transmission electron microscope. And also we have seen that you know how to use the Schicucci line and uh, how to use the convergent beam electron diffraction and uh, its various advantages of using these techniques in much more briefly. Similarly, we will just go through the uh, imaging techniques in transmission electron microscopy before you uh, look at the uh, laboratory demonstrations of the actual uh, experiment in TEM. So we will not get into the detailed uh, analysis of uh, uh, TEM imaging in this course because it is only a, a part of a characterization course. But you will get the uh, basic idea behind each imaging techniques in the uh, conventional transmission electron microscope. So if you look at uh, the, the major classification of imaging, the, the first one goes like this, amplitude contrast imaging. That is formation of a bright field image by using only the transmitted beam. B, formation of a dark field image by using only one strong diffracted beam. So the other category is a phase contrast imaging, where the formation of image by more than one beam interfering each other. The contrast is therefore a composite of interference effects and amplitude changes produced by defects. So we will first go through the, the amplitude contrast imaging or we can also say that it is a diffraction contrast. And the name itself says that once you say that it is a diffraction contrast or amplitude contrast, it directly related to the uh, diffraction intensity. So you have some idea about how the diffraction intensity uh, is being uh, perceived and uh, which we have seen so far. But just for a clarification, we will go through that uh, once again. And we, in a X-ray diffraction, we have seen that you know in a in a diffraction you have you know you have kinematical theory and assumptions. Similarly, in TEM also you have a couple of theories which arises out of this specimen. So all the kinematic uh, relation what we have seen in X-ray diffraction holds good here. And then we will say that uh, in another theory called a dynamic theory and then we will see the difference, the key difference between these two theory and how they are explaining the origin of the contrast in the image. So these things we will see. So if you look at the kinematical theory is applicable to only thin specimen and for conditions away from the exact Bragg condition which is S not equal to 0. You have to remember this point uh, very uh, clearly here. We will be using this uh, parameter called deviation parameter called S which is uh, which describes the, the diffraction takes place away from the Bragg position. So uh, as I mentioned in the previous lectures also, this idea you have to keep in mind whether the diffraction takes place with exact Bragg condition where S is equal to 0, where the diffraction intensity where we are looked at where S is not equal to 0, that means away from the Bragg position. So, so kinematical condition applicable to only in this situation for a thin foils. So if you look at the uh, diffracted intensity, this is uh, psi square d stands for diffraction which is equal to f by t whole square sin square pi t s by pi s square. And the intensity for a, a transmitted beam psi square 
is equal to 1 minus f by t whole square sin square pi t s by pi s square. So, you can just uh, simply write this psi square t plus psi square d is equal to 1. So, the kinematic theory predicts that the bright field and the dark field images are complementary because uh, even in the x-ray diffraction we have mentioned it, it assumes that the uh, only one diffracted beam and the one transmitted beam that is a two beam condition. So, that is why this equation uh, predicts that you have a bright field image as well as a dark field image they are complementary to each other. So, the kinematical function predicts periodic variations in intensity with the thickness for, for a constant s that is thickness fringes or variation in intensity with s for a constant thickness which lead to fringes about the Bragg contours. What we are now trying to say is this function whatever we have just said is the function is a kinematical function which predicts a periodic variation in the intensity with the thickness for a constant s. Suppose if you s is constant, the so the how the periodically the intensity varies or the variation in the intensity with s for a constant thickness. So, these two will describe how you see a kind of fringes. So, the kinematical theory I try to explain this the fringes which we see in a, a bright field uh, imaging, TEM imaging. The intensity maximum occurs in a dark field whenever S is equal to n by T that is a constant thickness or when T is equal to n by S for a constant S. So, this we will see in a in a example with an example and before you go to the actual imaging, let us look at this uh, slide very interesting slide. This is a, the most fundamental idea one should uh, get before you get into the uh, interpretation of image contrast. You see this is the assume that the schematic shows the a thin specimen of thickness t and then you have this uh, incident beam psi naught and which enters the uh, specimen and then you have and from the diffraction phenomenon you know that the, the beam enters the specimen and then try to interact and some of the assume that if some of the beams are diffracting. So, the intensity of the transmitted beam as well as the diffracted beam will oscillate like this. Why it oscillate like this? We have the reason. We will see in a few minutes. But now look at this. Suppose if you assume that the, the beam enters the sample surface and as it go inside the deeper into the crystal, then the transmitted intensity follow this oscillation and the diffracted intensity follows this oscillation. So, that point you remember and this distance that means, if you look at this uh, transmitted intensity, this portion is characterized as psi g called extinction distance. We will in a minute we will see what is it and so much of intensity is lost from the uh, transmitted beam. So, this distance is a, a characteristic distance for a material and depends upon various parameters that also we will see. And you see that uh, depending upon the, the number of this psi g, n psi g in the sample which is equal to thickness of the sample I mean thickness of the thin foil. This also we will uh, see how it is valid. But before you for time being you ignore about this, but what I am trying to show here is you please start thinking before you uh, interpret the image contrast in a, in a TEM. The electron beam enters this sample and 
your transmitted and a diffracted beam have the intensity oscillation in this manner. That is that point you remember to start with. Then we will see how we can manipulate this idea to understand the some of the image contrast in the uh, TEM operation. So, when you what is written here the intensity oscillation in a perfect crystal section of a thickness n, n psi g. So, we are talking about a perfect crystal that means, I do not have any fault within the top to a bottom surface of the crystal, it is a perfect crystal. I do not have a diff any you know boundaries, I do not have any vacancies, I do not have any dislocations, I do not have any uh, interface and so on. So, you assume that it is an ideal crystal and then your electron beam transmit through the sample and then that time the intensity oscillation is of this kind. We will just work on this idea as we move, all, move along. The periodic variation of psi square that is intensity with the T leads to a primary extinction T naught is equal to 1 by s. Forget about this T naught is equal to 1 by s which is a, a relation which how the extinction distance has got. We will we will talk about it in a in a while, but the periodicity of the potential energy that originates with the periodicity of the atom arrangements. So, now we will try to answer the, the question why the periodicity, why the intensity oscillates like that. So, we will try to have some kind of a qualitative uh, understanding. The periodic potential causes the amplitude of the high energy electron to be transferred back and forth dynamically between forward scattered and diffracted wave functions. At precise Lowe condition for a, for a strong diffraction, the physical distance over which the wave amplitude is transferred back and forth once is called the extinction distance. So, now you see that uh, you have the an ac accountability for why we see that intensity oscillation in the a perfect crystal. So, it is because of the periodic potential that causes the amplitude of the high energy electron to be transferred back and forth. So, we have the uh, lattice, lattice have the atoms and then the lattice has got a periodicity and then the periodicity of the potential energy of the lattice which affects the amplitude of the high energy electron. So, that is the basic idea. So, the interaction of these two will cause the beam to oscillate back and forth and at a precise Lowe condition for a strong diffraction the physical distance over which the wave amplitude is transferred back and forth once is called extinction distance. Now, you go back and see this it will make a sense. So, now you see that uh, it goes forward and backward once and this distance is called a extinction distance very important in, in understanding the, the uh, diffraction contrast or any fringe contrast in the bright field image. So, this is explained again by a dynamical theory the usage of uh, extinction distance and so on. In dynamical theory that means, dynamic diffraction conditions the extinction distance psi g is defined as pi v divided by lambda f g, where v is the volume of the unit cell and f the structure factor for the particular reflection. So, you have the idea about uh, structure factor, how it originates, what it contains. So, you know at least you can now connect what why psi g is a characteristic of a, a material. 
at every integral number of extinction distances all the electrons end up in the forward direction that is transmitted direction and at every odd half multiple of extinction distances all the electrons end up in the diffracted directions. So, it clearly describes what we have seen in the, the previous slide, how the oscillation takes place and so on. And now, having said that this is the, the kinematical approximation and how the dynamic, dynamic theory explains this uh, extinction distance. In kinematic theory, we say that only one diffracted beam we are looking at and one transmitted beam we are looking at and there is no interaction between these two. That is the assumption of the kinematic theory. In a dynamic theory, we say that these two beam try to interfere and then produce some effect. So, the equation which we are seeing in the slide describes this phenomenon, interaction of the transmitted beam and a diffracted beam and then what it conveys. Let us see. d phi naught by d z is equal to i pi by psi naught phi naught plus i phi by psi g into phi g into exponential 2 pi i s z. This is for the transmitted beam and this is a diffracted beam d phi g by d z is equal to i pi by psi g times phi naught into exponential minus 2 pi i s z plus i pi by psi naught into phi g. These two equations are popularly known as howe valen equations. Describe the variation of the amplitudes phi of the undeflected and diffracted waves as a function of z the distance through a perfect crystal. The first term in each equation arises from the scattering from the undeflected beam and the second term arises from the scattering from the diffracted beam. They show that the amplitude of each wave changes as the wave progresses through the crystal due to a contribution from each other. So, these two equations explains the interaction of transmitted beam as well as the diffracted beam. So, that is the physical meaning of these two equation. Now, we will just come back to the other features of this uh, dynamical theory. The exchange of electron density between the transmitted and diffracted beams is exactly analogous to the motion of two coupled harmonic oscillators which periodically exchange all the vibrational energy of the system. The subsidiary maxima occurs when s to square plus psi g to the power minus 2 into t square is equal to an integral. So, this is one you can see the subsidiary maxima in the image contrast. For thin crystals, the value of t that is thickness can be determined from the measurement of s at subsidiary fringes either in the image or in the diffraction patterns provided that the values of psi g are known. You will be able to find out the thickness of the foil if you know the psi g of a given material. So, we will see that also. So, the contrast effects in a perfect crystal are expected to be due to changes in thickness that is wedge fringes, fringes at inclined defects. Changes in S will result in a Bragg contours, changes in orientation, changes in S as, as well as G. So, we will, we will now demonstrate all this uh, predictions by the both the theories with the simple examples, how the contrast varies or what kind of contrast variation you will be seeing by change of thickness or change of S yes or change in orientation of the foil. So, the important microstructure features include the changes in orientation with or without change in the structures or composition 
such as grain, twins, precipitates, structure of boundaries. Lattice defects, point defects, line defects, planar defects and volume defects. Multiphase systems, it changes in the composition but not in the structure example spinodals, changes in the composition and structure general precipitation, changes in the structure but not composition for example, modern site, interface, interfaces coherent, partially coherent, incoherent. So, all this uh, features can be identified with the, the contrast mechanisms predicted by the both the theories like kinematic as well as dynamic theory. So, we will see one by one. By one. So, this schematic shows the, a general, a very general diagram. This is, uh, I just brought it just for the completion. You know the, the basic idea behind it. This is the object and, uh, and then you have the incident beam coming through this object and you have the lens and this is the back focal plane where your diffraction pattern is recorded and you have the image plane. So, this schematic is illustrating condition for imaging periodic structures. If D is large enough and alpha small enough, the diffracted beam A or A dash recombines with the direct beam B to give a magnified image of the planes D. The diffraction pattern is formed in the back focal plane A, A dash. N represents the diffraction pattern and Q magnifies the image of this pattern for the beams A and B. So, it is simple ray diagram. Uh, you all familiar with uh, all the components here. Uh, now, we will now go to specific uh, operation in a TEM. The schematic what you are seeing is a contrast in the bright field image arises through the local variation of the intensities of the diffracted beams and the diffracted beams is stopped by objective aperture. So, what you are seeing here is this is the specimen you have the electron beam coming through this and then you have a direct beam and then this is a diffracted beam and this is an objective aperture. In a bright field image, you see that all the diffracted beams are stopped and only direct beam is allowed to pass through the objective aperture. On the other hand, you have the direct beam is stopped by the objective aperture, only diffracted beam is allowed to pass through the objective aperture and that is how the, the both the bright field and dark field images are allowed to form and this operation can be done through a, a beam tilt and this, this again we have seen it uh, when we so discussed about the diffraction phenomenon, this, this is just for a recall. And now, we will look at this uh, a typical uh, bright field transmission electron micrograph and this micrograph belongs to a thin foil of molybdenum showing a light grains, a dark grains, fringes and subgrains. So, now our idea is uh, why do we see this a uh, contrast? Why certain positions or certain grains are appearing darker and why certain regions appear in grey colour and why particular grains are appearing in bright. So, that is, that is where we have to look at uh, the theories and how we understand this. We should also understand why we see these fringes in the uh, bright field image and uh, we will go back to this image and then first try to explain why 
this grain is appearing dark. So, if you if you can go back and then <coughs> look at this schematic, what you are seeing here is here is a specimen and then this is an electron beam passing through and this is a direct beam and this is a diffracted beam. Just assume that this diffracted beam which is coming out of particular region or a set of planes or set of grains being stopped by the objective aperture which is not reaching in the image plane. So, you can now correlate by looking at this schematic and this image that means this is a bright field image I said. So, the region which is appearing very dark are diffracting very strongly and they are not getting entered into the objective aperture. For example, the complete set of planes in the grain and this region and this region they are strongly diffracting, but they have not entered into the objective aperture. So, that regions will appear dark and the region which are appearing very bright that means they are they may not diffracting strongly or the diffracted beam also entering into the up objective aperture we can consider that way also so so you can you can either consider it is not diffracting strongly or the diffracted beam also entering into the objective aperture basically this contrast arises because of the orientation of the grains. So, you can see that a strong diffraction, not diffraction are in, in between. Some diffracted beams are entered, something is not entered into the objective aperture. So, you can you can you can apply all the knowledge which you got in the uh, in diffraction phenomenon, including the, the deviation parameter and so on. You can put together to understand this to give some perspective why you get this uh, contrast. So, you can also look at some of the other very intricate features like a fringes. Okay, I, know, I know that a grain which is very dark, we can say that that particular grain is strongly diffracting. But when you have the fringes like this, why I get this a very a systematic absence of a dark and bright, dark and bright, systematic absence of intensity. Why do you see that? That we will look at with this example or a schematic illustration of the origin of fringe contrast in the images of the crystal. So, look at this schematic you have the a thin foil which has got a hole inside. After uh, electrolytic polishing typically you produce a, a hole like this in a, in a metallic foil that means you create a nice edge by jet thinning. Assume that your hole is prepared I mean in this manner and uh, as I just showed in the two slides before this is the you know the electron beam enters the sample in this direction and then you have the transmitted beam that or direct beam or a diffracted beam they have the intensity oscillation like this and the thickness of the foil is t from top surface p to the bottom surface p prime and then please note that the diffracted beam is out of phase by pi by 2 with respect to the direct beam. So, the, your direct diffracted beam is out of phase by pi by 2 in this. Okay. So, now you just see that The bottom portion of the schematic is B, which shows 
some kind of a, a bright dark bright dark bright lines they are called fringes here also it is the fringes are in circular shape here it is in a vertical lines they are all fringes so now the question is how to account for this intensity oscillation in this fringes so if you look at this a transmitted intensity oscillation it is a diffracted intensity oscillation this periodicity is t not prime the t not prime which is again equivalent to psi g or an extinction distance we can say that so you look at this suppose if you have a a boundary like this in the material and then you can just look at the how the diffracted beam will travel through this a boundary then because of that how the intensity variation will appear in a bright field image that is what we are interested suppose if you have a boundary inclined like this ab you see that uh, you have the the diffracted intensity maxima here it comes on the bright field it will appear like a a dark line wherever the diffraction maxima is there you see in a bright field image it will appear darker because the diffraction maxima is corresponding to minima in the direct beam intensity oscillation so that is where the the dark lines are seen remember that intensity is not zero there but it is minimum so when you have this kind of uh, a diffraction intensity which oscillation which come across any inclined boundary like this or this you will have this intensity oscillation that is called a uh, fringes let us go through the uh, a caption so this is the illustration of the origin of the fringe contrast in the image of crystal section through the crystal showing the kinematical intensity oscillation of the direct and diffracted beams the depth periodicity t not prime is equal to 1 by s and ab the grain boundary or it could be a stacking fault cd is a wedge and e is a hole b is a section normal to the beam corresponding to the bright field image showing dark fringes f or thickness extinction contours so this particular fringe contrast is related to s that is it inversely related to s 1 by s t is equal t not prime is equal to 1 by s and then we will show some more uh, examples for this so now this is accounts for this fringes what we are seeing any fringes we are seeing so not only that even if you look at the the dislocations but what we are seeing here the sub boundaries sub boundaries or dislocation whatever we are seeing here it clearly related to the surface unevenness which will have ups and downs when a such a crystal will interact with the the diffracted beam and a, i mean a electron beam i would say which undergoes a intensity oscillation as we we have seen in the schematic then this kind of contrast is possible is that is a very simple qualitative explanation one can get without getting into the any complication you can see that uh, the thickness extinction contours and the bend contours in the samples for a molybdenum crystal the grain boundaries lie normal to the plane of the foil here you can see that the boundaries and you can see this fringes or you can say that uh, contours bright and dark line because of the it is orientation 
and the ups and downs or it could be ups and downs. So, if, if it is an inclined surface, you are bound to have this intensity oscillation due to the, the we are because it is inter, intersecting with the, the diffracted and the transmitted intensity oscillation. So, that is what it is. The, this, the micrograph shown here is foil of aluminum. You have uh, some features marked A, B, C, D and so on. You have A, two low order strong reflections H k L and minus H minus k minus L. The single contours B, C, D belongs to a higher orders of H k L. So, you have this particular band is because of the a strong reflection from particular uh, HKL plane and they are all belong to higher order HKL. This con dark lines comes from and please note that though you may consider the whole band as a, a strong uh, diffraction or whatever it is appearing bright and dark where the kinematical theory explains, there is a variation within this band bright and dark which, which, is, which is explained only by the dynamical theory where the transmitted and the diffracted beam interacts and produces this oscillation. And if you apply this concept of kinematical theory and we can look at uh, some of the pits and the holes which forms in the specimen and they also produces a fringes. So, look at the schematic, this is considered a, a thick specimen which has got a, a hole in it. Uh, so, this is the intensity oscillation of your uh, diffracted beam and this is a transmitted beam and so on and this is the the extinction distance and since the extinction distance is 3 times of the thickness. So, we can write it is equal to t is equal to 3 psi g and you can look at the, the fringes from the this is the thick full thickness after that you form a fringe pattern like this circular fringe and it clearly shows that the distance between these two fringes is related to extinction distance like this. So, if you simply count the, the, num the distance, the number of fringes, we will be able to calculate the uh, thickness of the foil. This is of course, pertaining to that particular location where you, you are seeing a, a pit or a hole in the foil. So, you will be you are seeing this uh, fringes, then you can relate this fringes and its count to the, the total thickness of the foil. So, this is a, a geometrical description of formation of image pattern at holes or a similar thickness irre irregularities in thin foils. Dark fringes correspond to the intensity minima in the bright field. So, whatever the dark fringes you are seeing as I mentioned in the previous slide, it is not 0, but it is an intensity minima in a bright field image. So, you can see that uh, a typical example which is shown in this uh, uh, diagram, uh, this is a not uh, sorry it is not a diagram, this is a micrograph, actual micrograph. You see that hole which is formed in a foil has got the fringes like this. And here again another schematic which illustrates the, the bend extinction contours. So, you have the foil of this nature which is a bend and this is the electron beam entering into the foil and it will produce the, the contours of this nature. And this suppose if you assume that this is the a bright field image and this is the intensity oscillations 
and if it is a dark field image this the dark will appear brighter and this will appear darker and so on. So, this is the uh, geometrical origin of a bent contours for the idealized case in thin foil section observed in the bright field illumination. And this is again uh, uh, yeah, another example of the fringe contrast and, uh, and etched pits in a steel. So, you will get uh, a symmetrical contours like this because you can identify the, the symmetrical nature of the contours by the um, SAD pattern which is given as an insert here. So, the point which I want to emphasize here is if you understand the the uh, electron beam interaction with the uh, a perfect crystal and then if you assume that the intensity oscillation of the transmitted beam and the diffracted beam and any irregularities or a thickness variation or any of the microstructural features they are going to give rise to a intensity oscillation are called a fringes or a bend contours and so on. So, here is another example where the where you have the a sample which, which has got an inclined boundary and uh, you have this intensity oscillation of the diffracted beam. So, the geometrical origin of the fringe contrast at the phase shift or interface plane the number of fringes depends on the extinction distance for the operating reflection g. So, please understand one thing very important thing this extinction distance is a characteristic of an operating reflection g that is for a given Bragg condition the extinction distance is valid. So, the, the number of fringes as I just mentioned depends upon the, the extinction distance for the given operating reflection. So, here is a typical uh, micrograph given for a grain boundary. So, you see that uh, the fringes in the inclined boundaries intersecting the polycrystalline section is shown here. See the, the boundary is not straight here, it is an incl incl inclined plane for this orientation. Suppose if you change the orientation, you will be able to see a such a, a slope in this boundary also. So, that is where the the tilting exercise is very sensitive in uh, TEM. So, you see that uh, the kind of fringes uh, it produces that clearly shows that kind of a taper section that boundary has and then we can uh, we can identify this uh, uh, boundary and it, the, the fringes comes because of the what we have seen in the schematic. The reason for the obtaining a fringe contrast is explained qualitatively by the kinematical theory and dynamical theory and so on. And we can also explain this uh, diffraction contrast through something called a phase amplitude diagram. What you are seeing here is uh, let me first start with the uh, a polar representation of a complex number which is being used to construct the phase amplitude diagram. This is for uh, an unit circle on a unit circle exponential i theta. This is a polar representation of a complex number. And what you are seeing here in this uh, schematic is the wavelets diffracted from a unit cells at increasing depth r g in the expression diffracted intensity psi s is equal to summation over r g into f g exponential plus i 2 pi s dot r g. Recall that s is lying the vertical z direction. So, this the diffracted wave which travels inside the crystals. So, that is how the, the unit cells are uh, represented by this because the total diffracted intensity is always summation of the individual diffracted wavelets like this. So, we will just look at that uh, 
much more detailed using this phase amplitude diagram. The diagram which is shown in that uh, here is vectors representing the individual terms that is nothing but your uh, complex exponentials, how this each diffracted wave is considered like this. <coughs> so, this animation clearly shows that suppose if you have if you try to sum up the individual diffracted terms like this, then the, the total intensity of diffraction is given by this summation of all this exponentials, complex exponentials in this fashion. So, that is how the, the diffraction intensity is uh, appreciated or I would say is understood by this phase amplitude diagram. We will now see that how this phase amplitude diagram is useful in understanding the, the contrast what we uh, see in a bright field image. So, this is the again uh, the, the re representing the intensity psi psi star where you have the real part and an imaginary part of the total intensity. And you have this uh, phase amplitude diagram for two conditions, one is for S is greater than 0 or S is much, much greater than, much larger than the 0. That means, you have the phase amplitude diagram for two values of S, phase amplitude diagrams of diffracted intensity for two deviation parameters S. The eight short vectors each have the same length, but different orientations. So, the, the very important information which you obtain from this phase amplitude diagram is, so you will be able to look, uh, say what kind of uh, a contrast we are going to see just by looking at this uh, S values or how this the circle the diameter of the circle, the phase amplitude diagram circle, how it varies. By just looking at this, we will be able to comment on how the intensity is going to vary. So, we will see an example like that. So, here is a uh, schematic where you have a wedge kind of a sample and you see the electron beam coming and then how the, the diffracted wave vectors will form, how exactly it get you know rotated. The, I mean I would say that all this simple diagram shows that how the phase shift occurs as the function of the specimen thickness and then what you see here is the intensity of the transmitted beam and intensity of the diffracted beam. You can see that it is very close to the, the edge of the edge of the specimen, you see that you know the intensity is uh, high in a transmitted beam, but as you go up higher the thickness, you are able to see the, the diffracted intensity goes to the maximum and then as it comes down uh, further thicker side, that means you have that uh, uh, destructive interference. Uh, contributes and then it comes down and then again it increases. So, you can see that clearly the phase amplitude diagrams for increasing thickness across a wedge shaped crystal showing a origin of thickness fringes in the diffraction contrast. So, all the contrast whatever we have discussed in the uh, whether it is of a grain or a fault or boundaries, whatever we have just discussed in the fringes, they are all coming under diffraction contrast or amplitude contrast imaging. And this particular uh, illustration clearly shows that the, the thickness variation will have a significant influence on the, the, the fringe contrast what you see. So, here you see a similar example where 
the phase amplitude diagram shows the for a same wedge shaped crystals but with the s smaller by a factor of 2 that means you reduce the s that means what kind of changes it will show if you go back to the the introduction where i showed here that means my phase amplitude diagram circle is going to be bigger if i reduce the s the phase amplitude diagram or the circle is going to be bigger so this is what i am seeing so the the phase shift which is represented by this phase amplitude diagram is bigger compared to the uh, uh, different in the s value so similar uh, effect we can see it in an, uh, one of the uh, examples we can take some examples and see what 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 we have gone through is uh, true or not and we can look at actual fringes in a uh, yeah, metallic samples and then we will continue this uh, discussion in the next class thank you